Hello and welcome, Asushi Minahanga. Today I show you the RF power meter from Immersion RC. It's the second version and I was really curious to get this thing because I love measurement devices as you can tell in the background. So let's take a closer look at this thing here and if it can help you understand RF power, video transmitters and all kind of radiating stuff any better. Okay, so let's unbox this thing. Of course, again, it's a fake unboxing because normally I tend to take a really close look on the products before I film my reviews. On this side you have a normal SMA, an SMA rubber ducky. That's the easiest mode to check or sniff for RF power. We also get this little adapter here, so you can directly screw on video transmitters. So you have a direct connection, you can directly see how many milliwatts or decibel leave your video TX and if they are actually as much as they are labeled to. Of course this connection here can be very dangerous if you have a strong RF power. It can damage the receiver in here. It has an internal attenuator. What's an attenuator? You asked yourself. This is just a resistor, an RF resistor so to say. This here is 30 dB and you had to screw this on for direct measurements not to damage the insides of this thing here and here you just can leave it away so you get quite of a size advantage on this little thing here only 30 dB max yeah you can attenuate internally that's a good thing so while we are here in the close-up section let's just open the bay here. It's a 320 milliamp one cell lithium ion I guess. That gives you, they say, eight hours of runtime. Played around with this quite long and got the battery maybe half empty and then you can charge just with a normal USB cable. That's the first mode, that's the power meter mode. In the manual they already tell you you should rather sync in decibel then in milliwatts because it's a better unit so the decibels are larger than the milliwatts you have the power button here and this little joystick which has four directions and the press the joystick is a bit inconvenient in my opinion it doesn't always do the direction I want it to go but it's okay so the first mode power meter mode this is the oscilloscope mode. You can measure digital transmission like control link of your radio with this. And that's the Scully mode uh, reference level thingy. And yeah, the last thing is if you push it, you go into the menu. It's all the way from 35 megahertz, which were the old radios, 72 megahertz as well. And this is any UHF based system on 433 MHz. This would be Crossfire on 868, 900 for video, 1200 for video, 24 for video or control link. And then it starts at 56, it's calibrated every 50 MHz. I move to 58 straight here and select Fetchuck Band 4, which is straight at 58. Then the mode, average mode, is good for analog video and peak mode is good for digital transmission like control link. I have no attenuation here because it has an internal attenuator already. The span is the, the width of your measurements, the radio bandwidth and I set it to 40 milliseconds. So we had a closer look at this thing, let's see it in action and test a few video transmitters. So just a quick look on my test setups here. It's a good idea to have a steady power source. So I have this 12 volt power supply here, which can power different video transmitters. One interesting candidate, this is the AKK X2 Ultimate. It is supposedly being able to go from 25 milliwatt up to 1.2 watts which is a lot of power for such a small device and it really gets hot on the higher settings. I was not so happy with this with this connector here. I bent this thing here a bit and yeah, it still works. Hope I didn't damage it. 
So my measurements are inaccurate. Seven segment digit display and the push button style and it's quite easy to configure. Then we have this small connector and it's a quite firm connection. And of course it's a size advantage to be so small in comparison to the SMA connectors. But SMAs were screwable. Yeah, maybe they disconnect more easily on a crash. Maybe that's an advantage. That's how I have an adapter from this small thing here to SMA. And this can go directly into the RF power meter. And when I say directly, I mean with this converter. You really have to make sure that all the connections are firm. You don't want to lose RF power. And then one of the really important things, is try to have enough airflow. So I have a little fan here on my table to always supply enough cooling. 33 milliwatts on the Fat Chuck 4. So I'm right at 5.8. As I said, I'm a nerd for measurement devices. And here is another one. I already did a review on this Aronia Spectran HF 6065. That's a cool device. Lets you see things even closer. It lets me check if I'm really transmitting at 5.8 and yes I am. 5.8 straight away. So that's a good control. So now we see uh, this thing here. I'll make it a combined review. This thing here displays nice and it's a good advantage. F for fat chuck and 4 for channel and 1 blinking is the power level. Power level 1 is uh, 25 milliwatts and 25 milliwatts you see here like 33. And it's about the same on the good old immersion. 5, 8, 25 milliwatts, I see around the same values here, like 31 or 35. So that's fine. If I now long press the button until the, the number blinks, so I'm now in mode 2, which is 200 milliwatts, or rather 260, go to 3. 3 is 500 instead of the 600 that were advertised and mode 4 is the killer mode and it shows me 700 milliwatts on Fetchak 4 that's not quite was what was advertised and I tried to wiggle around check all the connectors and didn't get any better results either this thing here is a bit defective because of my abuse or they just don't give you more power. Maybe some other guys that also have the RF power meter and the AKK can test this for me as well and uh, leave me comments or feedback as how or what results you get. A bit hot. The connector though, it's terribly hot. The connector is like 60 degrees, 70 degrees. So this thing really gets hot here and I'm not sure if it can deliver a stable. 1.2 watts all the time. No, it cannot. Sometimes applying enough cooling power increases the milliwatts here. Now we are at 6, 625, 630. And for me, it never went to the advertised 1.2 watts. How much does the milliwatt power degrade by heat? I let it sit there for a bit longer now, right before it starts to smell. It's really damn hot. No, 580. So if you have this in your aircraft or in your copter and don't have enough airflow or enough cooling, you will get a degraded milliwatt output. And that's the beauty of this thing here is you can measure such behavior and not by trial and error, by flying far out and having worse signal than you expected. Now you know if this thing is too hot and now it's ah damn it. The connector is really burning hot and the heat cap here. Yeah it's also hot and everything is hot on this thing except for the power. So apply some cooling or airflow again and see how the milliwatts rise up again. But 
But you see the point, it gets better if it's cooled better. Let's have a look at the scully mode or the, the antenna sniffer mode. So I have attached an antenna here and I have two video transmitters here. Let's just say this thing here is our known source of trusty 25 milliwatts. Just the same position that we will use on H. And then I press up to define the zero value. So this is my reference level which is 25 milliwatts. And now I can move on to the next copter and quickly test is this thing here also? No, it's 10 dB more power. So that's a terrible lot. It doesn't sound like, but 10 dB is much. So this is the scully mode explained. Move to the transmitter and check it against the reverence level. This is one of the easiest sources of problems on a race if someone transmits to high power. Okay, so the last thing we should check is the oscilloscope mode. So I should move to 2.4. As I said, on digital transmission, go to peak. Span, I don't care, I'll leave it at 40 milliseconds, attenuation, none. And so now we are in the fancy looking mode. Move the antenna right next to the Taranis 2.4 GHz antenna and fire up Taranis. As soon as it's switched on, you see the decibels and once you know the maximum you normally get, like I do get 5.7 decibel here in this, you can measure a friend's Taranis on the same spot and see if it differs. So this helps you easily see if something's wrong with, uh, with the RF power of your radio. And this is the duty cycle, so half of the time the 2.4 GHz signal is carrying signals here at 40 milliseconds of span time. This, however, is not a, a true oscilloscope. So I would have hoped for these single bumps here to be the single channels and if I move the joystick and see moving them like I saw on my oscilloscope you don't see this thing here, so I would just use it for power metering as well. You can also probe your video installation and see. Now we have some micro buttons. Note the U before the watt. It's the unit of micro and not milliwatts, so that's a thousand less. And if I move over the chip, It switches to millibuds. Yeah, and over the chip and in the back as well. Yeah, 1.2 millibuds. It's now in 25 milliwatt mode, by the way. We can move up and see on the thin cable there's not much happening. Micro watts still coming to the SMA port here and have around 2 millibuds. Moving up the antenna, 4 milliwatts, and here you see uh, most part of the radiation is emitted on top of the antenna as we like it. So this little rubber duck is quite useful <laughs> as a sniffing device. Okay guys, so I hope you liked my review of the RF power meter. It's really a handy device, only 80 bucks now. The old version RF power meter did cost around 150 euros or dollars. It was quite expensive. This one is way more accessible, has a nice display, very small in size, can always be in your bag. And you can see if those fancy new Chinese video transmitters really transmit at the power level they are advertising for. I'm not 100% sure yet if the AKK X2 Ultimate is faulty for me because I've heard from other pilots they were really happy with it um, it works fine for me it just doesn't show me the 1.2 watts but also I wouldn't fly with 1.2 watts it's insane who other than extreme long-range pilots would need this and even the long-range guys they rather invest in really good antennas and good ground stations and they are fine with like 
five, six hundred milliwatts, I guess. Thanks for watching a lot. Leave me your comments, your thoughts about this thing, your questions, of course. Please subscribe if you didn't and if you found my channel through this video only. Use the bell icon also, that helps me stay in touch with you more easily. I will post one or two videos a week. I do a mix of videos about equipment and flying videos. Like for example, check out my latest video, it's a nice and relaxing flight in and above the trees. Not in the trees, yeah, one time, okay. <laughs> so, see you next time. Bye for now.